Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to process a night image so you could have something that looks like this turn out like this. We're going to be working on this image. Now, just glancing at it, it looks to be a horrible image. It's horribly underexposed. But I actually did that on purpose. I took this shot from the top of the tallest building in Buffalo. The evening I took the shot, it was very cold and very windy. And what I found was, if I used a slow enough shutter speed to more properly expose the scene, even though I had my camera on a tripod, the wind induced just enough shake into the camera and tripod to produce a blurry image. So what I did first was I upped the ISO of my camera. Then I produced an image that, in my opinion, just had too much noise. So what I decided to do was use the faster shutter speed with a lower ISO. I wanted to stay with the aperture I was using to get a lot of depth of field, and I got an image that was underexposed. But I did shoot raw, and if you shoot raw, a raw file will have a lot of exposure latitude. So I'll be able to, using Luminar, tease out a lot of details in the shadow, and you'll see that in a moment. Now, in the description below the video, I'll have all the camera gear info I used, all the settings I used, and um, you know, all the exposure info as well will be listed down there. Also down there will be a promo code to get my Luminar looks for over 30% off. So you could check that out if you'd like. Now, what I'm going to be doing will work in all versions of Luminar so you don't have to worry about or thinking that you're going to have to try to figure something out for the different version of Luminar that you might be using. Now I'm going to go right away. I'm going to go to add filter. Now it is a raw file and the first filter I want to add is the raw develop filter. If you're not shooting raw, you'll just have a develop filter. It has pretty much the same controls. Now, usually the first thing I like to do is set the white balance, but because the image is so underexposed, I don't think the white balance um, is, would be easy to set right now. I should get the exposure more proper. Now, what I would encourage you to do is if you have an image that is either considerably underexposed like this one or maybe overexposed, don't jump right away to the exposure slider. What I found is you'll get an image with better tonal depth if you try the highlights and shadow sliders first. So this image is underexposed. I'll go right to the shadow slider and open it up. And you can see as soon as I open it up all the way to 100, it's actually now a little bit overexposed. So I really didn't have to touch exposure at all. And I found that doing it this way, I will get an image at the end that just has better tonal depth. I'll have more uh, value uh, throughout the shadows, through the midtones, to the highlights. So that's why I like to do it this way. So I'm going to bring shadows down now to something more acceptable around 51. I'll go to highlights and just pull those right down. There are a lot of bright lights in the image and actually that didn't do much for this image right away. Um, now I get set the white balance and it's really difficult to set the white balance for a night image in the city. That's because there's just so many different light sources and the light sources have uh, varying color temperatures. Uh, for instance, sodium lights are going to be yellow to orange. Uh, mercury vapor lights are like a bluish green. And LED lights are really blue, although when we're under an LED light, our eyes perceive it to be white. Uh, it's, but the camera will record blue. So what happens is when you're trying to get a white balance, you're going to have sometimes lights that are going to be too yellow or too orange, or you're going to have lights that are going to be too blue. So it's really hard to strike that balance. What I found is, and what usually works best, is go right away to white balance drop down and put it on tungsten. I found that that usually works best. It rains in that yellow orange. It's still there, but it rains it in. What it does tend to do though, it makes the LED lights a little bit too blue. So sometimes, not always, you might want to then go to the temperature slider, move it to the right, or the tint slider to move it to the left. That's after you set it to tungsten. So I could, if, you know, lights are a little bit too blue, I could move it this way. But you got to be careful. You'll be making the yellow lights more yellow, the orange lights more orange. So you want to be careful. 
In this case, for this image, I'm just going to leave it on tungsten. I, I, gotta, I think that looks fine. We do have some blue up there, but that's fine. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, I'll do the white and black point next. I'm not sure if what I'm going to do works in Windows computers yet, uh, so I apologize for the Windows users if this functionality isn't yet in your Windows Luminar. But what I'm going to do to get a white point is I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Click on the white slider, and you can see all those colors bleeding through. That means I'm clipping those colors, or those channels. Blue, I'm clipping the blue channel. Green, I'm clipping the green channel. And a little bit of red you see in there, I'm clipping the red channel. Wherever it's white, I'm clipping all three channels. If you're clipping a channel, that means you have no detail whatsoever in that channel. For example, if we zoom in to the clock, these are clocks on this here. And you could see that when I hold the Alter Option key and click in, you could see that's white. So I'm clipping that, so I don't have any detail. Even if I move this to left, it's not going to get that detail in there. Uh, so I clipped, even though I underexposed the image quite a bit, I'm still clipping those bright areas. So it's really tricky to nail exposure. I'm going to keep the whites all the way down. Even then, I'm clipping a lot of different colors, but that's all right. It gives me more tonal depth, essentially. Uh, then same thing for blacks. I'll hold the Alt or Option key and click on the blacks. Now we have a total white screen. I'll move the blacks to left, and as you start to see, I start to clip green. I'm starting to clip a little blue. I don't see any red. Where you're clipping black, that means you're clipping all three channels. I'm just going to back it off a little bit and clip a little bit. It gives me a lot of range. I have some absolute black in the image, and I have some absolute white in the image. So I have a lot of tonal depth. I kind of like that. Now, I'm not going to do anything with clarity or contrast at all. I'm going to do that with other filters uh, you'll see in a moment. What I am going to do is go to Lens, and I'm going to click all three boxes. All right, that took care of the lens. Um, I think that's fine. I'm going to go to transform. It is kind of distorted a bit. And I'm going to go to the vertical slider. And I'm just going to push that to the right just to touch. See what that looks like. Let it render. Yeah, I think that looks much better. It's just a tiny bit. I just did a tiny bit. So I'm really done with the raw develop filter. I may come back and readjust something. But for now, I think I'm done. So. What I like doing next is remove noise. I've mentioned several times that it's best to remove noise early in your workflow because if you keep adding filters, especially filters that will sharpen or add detail or structure to your image, you're going to find that it's harder to, to remove the noise later. So I'm going to do that right away. So I'm going to click on Add Filter and I'm going to go to Denoise. And we're going to close that down. I'm going to zoom in to where there's a lot of noise, or at least some noise. I, I shot this at actually a relatively low ISO. Again, that's because the higher ISO produced just too much noise. So I'm going to go to Luminosity Slider. I like moving that right to 40 and see what I got. It's just my habit. And actually, that eliminated the noise. You have to be careful, though. If you move it too far, you're going to soften the image. And you don't want to soften the image too much. So I'm going to move it back down to 30. And... I could almost see noise. It's just really barely. I, I bet in the video you can't see any at all. I'm going to leave it at 30 and I'm going to move color. There's just a tiny bit of color noise in there. Like around 6. There were some little green dots in there. They're gone now. So I think the noise is done. So next I want to do something with sharpening. Now I mentioned that we have the clarity slider here. But I don't like doing that uh, on this image. So I'm not going to. Um, what I am going to do though is uh, go to add filter. And I'm going to go to Details Enhancer. I like this filter a lot, and I think it does a nice job. Now, I'll go right to Small, and I'll move that to the right. And once it renders, you can see that it, it added a lot of detail already, even at just 19. There's before, and there's after. I'll go to Medium. Now, it's kind of easy to go a little bit overboard, so you have to be careful. And I'll do a little bit large as well. So... There's before, and there's after. Before, after. I really like that. I think that did a fine job. Now, the sky up here, if you look off in the distance, there's some factories out here, and you can see some smoke going up in there. That's kind of cool in a way, but in a way that's a little bit distracting. I really want people to look at the city 
And you can see the city's a little dark in here and light over here. It's kind of not balanced super well. But I think I want to darken this. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to go down to Top Bottom Lighting. Close the filter catalog down. The first thing I'm going to do is Set Orientation, because I really want to only affect the upper part of the image. So I'm going to go to Set Orientation. And when I do that, we have this overlay. I'm going to go up and put that center line right on the horizon. So everything above that line will be affected by the top slider. So I'm going to go to the top slider and just darken it. And you can see how then it's graduated going the other way. So I think that works good. It just darkens that a little bit and helps focus everyone more down here. So we'll turn off set orientation. And I think I'm really almost done. We'll go to add filter. And I think all I really want to do right now is add a vignette. So we're going to go to vignette and I'm going to close the filters catalog. Now the main thing I'm reason why I'm adding the vignette is not so much to darken the edges, although I will, it's to brighten the middle a little bit to help people more notice the buildings in the middle. This is where I want them to look. This is city hall here. This is the court building here. So these are kind of important buildings, right? This is the county hall. And I, so I want them to notice that. So what I'm going to do is first go to the amount slider and move it to left to darken the edges a little bit. Then I'll go to inner light and I'll brighten up that middle. Quite a bit actually, more than I probably usually do. But I think that is it. And I think I'm actually done. So here's before and there's after. Before after. Now that image was horribly underexposed, but I did it knowing that I was shooting raw, knowing that my raw file would have enough exposure latitude to be able to get a final image that looks really nice. Now from this point on, I could come back in and go to raw develop if I want to, and maybe readjust the white balance or readjust the black point, the white point, whatever I think it needs, but I think this is fine. So that's really how I go about processing a night image or an image that's shot in the blue hour. The blue hour is right after the golden hour, basically. So right after the sun is totally below the horizon and it's kind of got that kind of uh, dusk dark, we like to call it, uh, look to it. Now this image was past that. It was really a night image, but you get the idea and these techniques will work for any type of blue hour shot and or night image. And I hope it helps you process your image. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.